And the scuda come in two sizes. There's a big scutum and there's a little scutum, depending on whether you're a male or a female tick. So you can tell by the picture who has the bigger scutum. The male has the bigger scutum, okay? So don't get confused. The male ticks are always smaller. So, you know, in terms of body size, the tick itself is smaller in the male version. But the scutum, you can see, covers the whole abdomen. So think of ticks as being two-headed snowmen or snow people. And so it's just the head and the body. And so with the male, the body's covered completely. And with the female, you can see the covering is a lot, um, you know, smaller. And basically, there's a lot of abdomen sticking out at the bottom. Think about it from the female aspect. Why would the female need to have a smaller scutum? Well, go a step further. So so yeah. Exactly. For those of us who are born children, you know you have to be able to expand. So that's what it's all about, is that they expand for the blood meals every time because they have to take in that blood to mold. But even more importantly, that third time, that blood has to be translated into egg mass. And if you see a tick after it has laid the egg mass, they do just deflate like a big punching balloon. And so basically, you know, that's it. So they can't have that big scutum because that holds them in place. With the males, they only just take in a tiny bit of blood, enough to mold, and that's really Really all, so they just don't have that energy and that egg requirement. So now that you know that, you can identify all female versus male ticks, even if you don't know the species, because the sputum is always going to be markedly smaller on the female, and the male, it's always going to totally encase the abdomen, no matter what species of tick you're dealing with.